Okay, this is the beginning of momentum for us. So before we can really get into momentum, I'm going to pose a question and I'm going to talk about the answer to that question. Um, it's fairly straightforward stuff, but let's say we have a mass of 5 kilograms moving at 10 meters per second towards another mass of 5 kilograms moving towards it at 2 meters per second. Now these things are going to hit and the question for us is what happens if they stick together? If they hit and stick together How's the system going to move afterwards? What's it going to look like? What goes on between those two things? Before we can jump into that uh, and, and looking at it as two things, we realize something pretty quick. It's tough to look at a system of two objects. That's a lot going on. So it would be easier if we could simplify it. Or if we could look at one object that represents two objects. The way that we can simplify systems is instead of looking at two separate objects, we look at the center of mass of the system. So, there are some nice things about the center of mass. For a single object, or for a system. For one thing, we can pretend that all mass is located at the center of point and at the center of mass. So for these two objects, instead of looking at them like five kilogram object doing something and a five kilogram object doing something, we could look at it like a 10 kilogram object doing something with some velocity. And we'll, we'll get to that but it simplifies it because I can describe one object very well. Everything we've done so far describes one object. So, pretend all the mass is located at the center of mass. That's one thing. Uh, the next thing, that's the point of rotation. If I spin an object, it wants to spin around its center of mass. Uh, and the next thing is that the center of mass is the point of balance. Since I can pretend all the mass is located at the center of mass, I could also balance at my center of mass. So before we get into momentum, we're going to look at the center of mass. There are two primary ways we're going to find this. Way one is easy, symmetry. So if I have a stick has a length of one meter, the center of mass is in the center of that stick, half a meter from each end. It's symmetrical. If we look at uh, a, a square, the center of mass is going to be right in the, the center. It's the center of mass. Symmetry is easy. The next one, uh, we're going to use an equation. The location of the center of mass in the x direction is m1 x1 plus m2 x2 over m1 plus m2. It's a way for us to find the center of mass. And this is going to get us closer to taking two objects and representing them as one. So let's say I've got a number line. Let me make this easy. We'll say 0, 1, and two. So we have one kilogram here and three kilograms here. Now this system is not symmetrical 
So we can't say that the center of mass is here. It's probably going to be closer to the 3 kilogram mass, but we need to find it. So in this simple example, the x position of the center of mass is um, m1, 1 kilogram, times 0. That's its location, plus 3 kilograms times 2. That's its location, divided by the total mass, 4 kilograms. So my x center of mass is 3 kilograms times 2 meters over 4 kilograms. Kilograms cross out. I get 0.75. Oh, sorry, 3 times 2. 1.5 meters. That's right here. That's the center of mass. That would be the balance point for that system. And I've reduced that system to its center. Now this works in both the x direction and the y direction. So um, if we had three masses located on a coordinate axis, got one, this is one, we would find the x center of mass by plugging in their locations m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 all over m1 plus m2 plus m3 and then doing the same thing in the y direction m1 y1 plus m2 y2 plus m3 y3 all over m1 plus m2 plus m3 this would give me a coordinate location for the center of mass. We're going to have to do a little bit of that. Now, the reason we talk about the position of the center of mass is so that we can take two objects and reduce them to one object sitting at the center of mass. What we're going to do from there is talk about the velocity of the center of mass. use V sub CM for short. So the velocity of the center of mass is going to be the position of the center of mass divided by time. So that's M1 X1 plus M2 X2 divided by M1 plus M2 and that whole thing is divided by time. Now mathematically what happens is that we have X over time and X over time. So the velocity of the center of mass is m1 v1 plus m2 v2 over m1 plus m2. This is really, really easy to do. So let's look at what we had. Our 5 kilogram mass moving in one direction at 10 meters per second and another 5 kilogram mass moving at 2 meters per second in the opposite direction. So the velocity of the center of mass here is 5 times 10 plus 5 times negative 2 and since its velocity direction matters, that's why we have that negative sign, divided by 5 plus 5. So we've got 50 minus 10 divided by 10 and the velocity of center of mass comes out to be four meters per second. So what we can do is now take this and say instead of two masses let's just take one big mass of 10 kilograms and say that it's moving at four meters per second. We're going to continue this idea on the next. We have a 10 kilogram mass moving forward at four meters per second. So, looking at this, we know that the velocity, and since it is of the center of mass, let's we'll note that, will not change if the net 
force, and since we're talking about a system, let's go ahead and say the net force outside of the system is equal to zero. As long as there's no net force, the velocity of the center of mass isn't going to change. That means when he's moving forward at 10, he's moving backwards at, sorry, that's a 5, moving backwards at 2. If they hit and afterwards they stick together, the velocity of the center of mass before is going to be equal to the velocity of the center of mass afterwards. Um, symbolically, that's m1 v1 plus m2 v2 over m1 plus m2 is equal to m1 v1 plus m2 v2 prime afterwards over m1 plus m2. These cross out, and we're left with this statement of equality. So before we jump into this problem, what this is telling me is that something before they hit and something after they hit is the same. MV is a lowercase p, and that stands for momentum. What this says is that the momentum before two objects hit is equal to the momentum after they hit. If the net force on a system is zero, momentum is conserved. That's a statement of this same thing, and we'll talk about it a little bit in class tomorrow how this relates to Newton's laws. So what we can do here is say that uh, 5 times 10 plus 5 times negative 2 is equal to, if they stick together, 5 plus 5 times their final velocity. So 40 is equal to 10 times the final velocity. In this case, after they hit and stick, they're going to move off with the final velocity of 4 meters per second. We'll spend a little bit more time talking about some more examples of momentum, but this is the basics. This is how we get to it.